यो वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन गाइज तन मई यर फॉर सिंपल स्निपेट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल ऑन डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड एलगोरिदम्स एंड इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल वी आर गोन बी राइटिंग अ कोड टू इम्प्लीमेंट द इंसर्शन शॉर्ट शॉर्टिंग एलगोरिदम इन सी प्लस प्लस प्रोग्रामिंग सो दिस इज बेसिकली द पार्ट टू ऑफ इंसर्शन शॉर्ट शॉर्टिंग एलगोरिदम इन पार्ट वन वी सॉ वॉट एक्जैक्टली इज इंसर्शन शॉर्ट वी सॉ लिटल बिट ऑफ थियरी वी ऑल्सो सॉ द वर्किंग एंड लास्टली वी ऑल्सो सॉ द एलगोरिदम which we actually dry ran so if you don't know what insertion sort is and the working you should watch part 1 but if you are already acquainted with insertion sort and if you already know what it is and you are just here for the code then this video is just for you so make sure you watch this video till the end and with that being said let's get started okay so as you can see on the screen i have already opened up my dc++ id and typed a little bit of c++ code i'm using c++ programming but you can use any other general purpose programming language so the algorithm is basically going to be the same and what i'll do is i'll drop the algorithm on the right hand side you can see on the black screen we have the entire algorithm from the previous tutorial we just have to convert this into a proper code so in c++ we know the execution starts from the main function so here what we'll do is we'll declare a integer array let's say int arr or int my array let's say the size 5 let's keep size 5 and hard code it so to take input from user we need a for loop right so before that i'll say see out enter phi integers in any order okay now let's create the for loop i'm going to say int i equals to 0 i less than phi and i plus plus so this is just for taking input from the user inside this we'll say see in my array of i okay so we take in all the values now we have to perform insertion sort on this array right so over here you can see on the top i have created a separate function this is a user defined function which is going to perform the insertion sort now it is taking an integer array as argument so what we'll do is we'll pass this my array over here so i'm going to say insertion sort and inside this i'm going to pass the my array okay so this function which we still have to define is going to perform the insertion sort sorting and this is where i've called it in the main function okay so here i'm calling the function and we have the function over here we still have to write the code basically convert the algorithm into proper code and after that so what we'll do is let's copy this and here we will say before sorting and we'll use the same for loop just to print out the array so here i'm going to say see out my array of i and a little bit of space and we'll then call insertion sort and then again i'm going to print it after the insertion sorting has happened and here i'm going to say after sorting okay so let's just save this and let's see so far if this int main code is working or not we still have not written insertion sort algorithm right now but let's see if the printing is actually happening i'll go to execute compile and run it's asking for five values let's enter the five values i'll say 4 3 5 6 and 1 and there you go you can see before sorting and after sorting is being printed i just need a little bit of space over here but you can see the sorting is not happening because obviously we still haven't written the code but other than that the code is working so coming over here i'll just add a end l over here so that we come on the next line and now we actually need to write the code inside this insertion sort now before we actually go inside and convert the algorithm into proper code note that when you pass an array in c or c++ in any function it is passed as address okay it is not passed by value so i hope you know the difference between pass by address pass by value pass by reference in c++ i have a separate video in fact i have a complete c++ tutorials playlist so what you can do is if you're confused regarding these three concepts just check out that video in this playlist i'll drop the video link in the video description but just note that whenever you pass an array in any function it is passed by address by default okay so when you pass my array inside this insertion sort function this arr which is passed over here is basically a pointer to this same array okay so arr is basically pointing to the base address of this my array and base address means the first value inside the array and you can use this arr pointer to iterate inside this my array only okay so these are one and the same that is this arr is pointing to this array only and not a separate copy that's that's basically passed by address right so you are coming inside let's actually go to the algorithm steps 
So if you see the step one is declare variables i, key, and j, right? So the i is basically just going to be used in iterating in the loop. So we don't need to declare that. Other than that, we need to declare j. So I'm going to say int j equals to zero. Let's assign a zero value. And I'm going to say int key equals to zero. Okay. So we've declared and in fact defined also two variables. Let's move on to step number two. Now step number two is a loop. So we are using for loop over here. And here we are going to use the int i. So I'm going to say int i equals to one. We're starting from one and we're going to n minus one. Now n is the size of the array and we have hard coded the size as phi, right? So i, so the condition would be i less than phi, right? Because n minus one is four. So we'll run from one to four and then we have i plus plus. Okay. So inside the outer for loop, the first step, as you can see from the algorithm is 2.1. So here what we're doing is we are saying key is equal to ARR of I. So here what we're doing is we're picking the next element. Now this element that we have picked is supposed to be inserted in a particular order, right? That's what insertion sort is all about. And the next 2.2 step is we say J is equal to I minus one. So now what we are doing is we are again making the value of j as one position to the left of the value that we've picked because from that's where we are going to compare right so we will pick the value we will compare it with all the values on the left hand side and depending upon whether that values are greater we will shift them one place ahead make that particular place for this key value and then insert this key value at that particular index position that is what insertion sort is all about so this is 2.1 and 2.2 as you can see from the algorithm at step number 2.3 we have a inner loop which is basically going to be a while loop because inside the while loop we have two conditions and the conditions are as follows the first condition is whether j is greater than or equal to zero because obviously we are using j as an index position so in arrays obviously the index positions cannot go below zero they cannot be minus one or minus two right index position starts from zero and they go only, only in the positive direction. So we need to check that. And the second checking is for whether the key value is greater or smaller than the values to the left of it. So we say ARR of J is greater than the key. So if these two conditions both are true, only then the inner while loop will be executed. And when ARR of J is greater than the key, what it means is that all the values which are to the left and that are greater than the key need to be shifted one position to the right so that one index position is freed where we can insert this key because we are using insertion sort to perform sorting in ascending order, right? So we need the smaller elements to the left and the larger ones to the right. So this is where the shifting actually happens. So if you go inside this inner loop in the algorithm, you can see the step number 2.3.1, we are doing that shifting. We say ARR of J plus one equals to ARR of J, right? So, so those elements are shifted one place ahead. And then here we are saying J is equal to J minus one. So we are decrementing the J value. So if we just shifted one element to the right, then we also have to shift the other element one place ahead, which is just besides or to the left of that element, depending upon whether it is greater than the key, right? So let's say in the array, you have three, five, six and four. Okay. So imagine you have three, five, six and four. In fact, let me just show it on the screen. And if your key value is four, then that four needs to come after three and before five. So five and six needs to go one position ahead. They need to be shifted one position to the right. And four then will come inside that new index position, which is vacant between three and five, right? So this is that insertion sort that is happening and this shifting is happening over here. So here that phi and six will shift one position to the right. And this J is used to particularly point to those values. And when you come outside this while loop, the last step, which is step number 2.4, you can see we say ARR of J plus one equals to that key. So now we pick that four and you put it between three and five. Okay. So yeah, this is the complete algorithm. We've written all the code. Now let's see if it works. If you come inside the int main, we've already typed in the code. We are calling our insertion sort function over here. We are passing the my array and we've already written the entire function. 
okay so before we execute it one small change that i did is i did not assign a key value of zero i just declared key i did not assign it any value i don't know why it is not exactly working when i assign zero to it so just go ahead and compile and run and it's asking to enter five integers let's enter five integers i'm going to say four three six seven and one so it's not in any order we need ascending order right so it should be one three four six and seven if i hit enter there you go you can see after sorting we have one three four six seven so you are getting a proper ascending order and our insertion sort sorting algorithm is working perfectly fine so yeah this was the insertion sort sorting algorithm i hope you understood the code and if you watch the previous video then you definitely will because it's just conversion of the entire algorithm into proper code so yeah that's it for this video guys i will be sharing the code with you guys and you can check that in the video description if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments how this video was do share it to your friends as well and i'll see you guys in the next video peace